Well, friends, can you believe it? We have been on our hero's journey now for six, almost seven weeks, some of us. We've accepted our call to adventure at the beginning of September, and we've been climbing steadily ever since with heavy backpacks and with muscles that are not quite used to this kind of exercise. So at this point in our journey, I think it's fair to say that most of us are feeling pretty tired. But Parents Weekend and the fall break offer us an opportunity to stop climbing and to take a rest. It's a chance to kind of offload those heavy backpacks, to drink maybe some cool, refreshing water, to notice where we are now, and to admire the view. We have come a long way already. So first of all, in the spirit of noticing just how far we have come, I'd like to stop for a moment to appreciate the good efforts of two of our senior leaders who are taking their positions of leadership to the, very, to the next level. Our chapel assistants, Andres and Jalen, are learning that to lead from behind is often means doing twice the work. It means not just doing things yourself, which is often the easiest way to get things done, but also inspiring and encouraging and helping others to lead along the way. For example, at this point in the year, Andres and Jalen have encouraged 61 of us so far to offer the blessings before meals. Now we know that it would have been far easier for them to simply say the blessings themselves and be done with it. But thanks to their dedication and inviting others to lead, a number of us have had the opportunity, a chance to get up and speak in front of the whole school, to practice communication, which is one of our habits of learning. But more importantly, the result of Jalen's and Andre's leadership is that our community's experience is enriched every day by hearing a variety of voices and languages expressing thanks on behalf of all of us for our many blessings that we share here on The Point. So this week we're going to build upon the spiritual practice that we began last week. So I invite you to sit up straight, rest your hands comfortably in your lap, take a deep breath in, and notice your belly extend as you inhale just by the movement of your hands. As you exhale, your belly will contract a little bit. So breathe in again, and as you do, focus on the feeling of your breath coming in through your nose and then going out through your nose again as you exhale. This shouldn't take, it shouldn't make a big noise. It's just a gentle in and out breathing. And as you do so, notice what your breathing feels like. There's nothing you had to do in order to earn the gift of breathing. And there's not a lot that you can do to keep it from happening. Your breathing, your breathing simply is. You are. So for the next few moments, we'll take a mindful pause, just as we did last week, to give our brains and our bodies a much needed break from their usual busy activities. Only for this week's spiritual practice of mindfulness, instead of silence, we'll try listening to a little bit of soft music. Now this peaceful time is completely yours. No one will bother you or look at you, and I ask that you respect the privacy of those around you as well. In about two minutes, the music will gradually get softer and then it will fade away completely. As it does so, open your eyes and return to this space. In the meantime, if your mind wanders to thoughts other than your, on your breathing, don't worry, that's what our minds do, it's their job. But try to bring your thoughts back to focus on your breathing or on simply the sound of the music. So let us begin. Please join us now in prayer or in quiet reflection. Gracious God, thank you for this welcome break in the middle of all our activities. 
sports, studies, and responsibilities. We are welcome, I mean, we are grateful for this peaceful place and for a chance to sit quietly, to be present in this moment, and, the notice, and to notice the blessing of simply being here. For things that have gone well in this past week, we thank you. For things that have not gone well in this past week, we thank you too, because we know that there is as much to learn from our successes as from our mistakes. As parents weekend approaches, God, give us courage to show ourselves as young men that we are becoming, to our families, friends, or host families. Help us remember to be hopeful, not helpless. Helpful, not helpless. Give us rest, relaxation, so that we can return to Cardigan with renewed energy and commitment to living the life that you intend for us to live. Please keep our families safe as they travel to the point and be with us whether we travel near or far. We pray especially for our brother Brandon as he leaves the hospital to travel home with his parents. Show us that we can, show us what we can do to help him as he recovers. We pray all of these things with gratitude and faith. Amen. Today we kick off a new theme for the coming week, that is respect. We want to thank those who will be providing leadership in today's chapel service. Speaking a little later on behalf of the brothers will be Thomas Madigan. Our gift of music will be offered by J. Juan Moon. We are grateful to Ms. Narosky's advisory group for welcoming people as they enter the chapel today. We invite your advisory group to serve our community in this way in the weeks to come. If you'd like to volunteer to be the greeters for chapel, please send an email either to me or Jalen so that we can put you on the schedule. Next Thursday, most of us ninth graders will be away from campus visiting secondary schools. So we are especially in need of underclassmen to volunteer to help us with next week's service. For instance, if your advisory group has lots of underclassmen, this would be a good week for you to volunteer to serve as greeters. But now, let's get back to today. Please join me in welcoming the faculty members speaking on behalf of the mentors, Dr. Houston. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. McCusker, students and colleagues. Today I'll tell you something about respect. Not an easy subject, to be sure. When we see it, we know what it looks like. But how do we talk about respect generally? Well, I thought I'd begin with George Washington. When he was about 14 years old, the first president of the United States wrote 110 rules of civility and decent behavior. He didn't have the benefit of a formal education, so he wanted to teach himself the manners of a proper educated gentleman of the time. Of his 110 rules, some seem a little weird to us today, like rule number 92, take no salt with a greasy knife. But others, like the first rule, mean more to us today. Every action done in company ought to be done with some sign of respect. Every action is clear enough. In company makes sense to us, we all live together. But what does respect itself mean? Well, I'm the Latin teacher, so here's your Latin lesson. Re means again or a second time. And specto means to look at closely or examine. So when you redo something, you do it a second time. And if you are a spectator, you watch something closely. So to respect is, literally, to give something a second, careful look, to consider it. Does this give us a clue about the concept? I think it does. It tells us that respect has to do with close attention, awareness, and mindfulness. It tells us that to respect something is to have a closer look at it and then look back at it, to really consider it. And it tells us that respect is specific. After all, you have to respect something. So if we think of respect as having a second, closer look, how do we apply it in the real world? I'll offer three examples today. One that has to do with people, one with places, and one with things. The rule of thumb throughout is this, 
True signs of respect are a combination of those that we show everybody, every place and everything, and those that we show particular people, places, or things after we've had our second look at them. Toward people, we show respect with some general signs and signals. We sit up straight in chapel, for instance. We make eye contact when we're speaking to someone. We practice politeness instead of rudeness, etc. But respect goes beyond these general things that apply to all people. There are the ways we show signs of respect to particular people, to individuals. After all, people are different, and they're able to communicate with us. They can tell us what they think, feel, or want. Respect won't, it really can't, be the same in every interaction. When I meet a person and carefully consider that person, look twice at that person, my signs of respect are informed by his or her character when we interact. For instance, it would be a sign of respect to tease a person with a sense of humor about himself, but it would be a sign of rudeness to tease a person who didn't have that sense of humor. Taking the time to know someone is, in itself, an aspect of respect. Listen to a person, get to know him, give him that second look, that's respect. What about place? We all live in a special place, and we're fortunate to be here. There are general signs of respect toward any place. We don't throw trash on the ground, we try to conserve energy, we don't cut corners. But how do we show respect to a particular place? I'll give you an example that's personal. I really like animals, and the woods and hills around Canaan are full of animals. We respect this unique place by serving as stewards of the particular environment we live in and taking care of the other creatures that live here with us. Being mindful of the way our actions and our very presence here on the point impact them. Take a second look at this place, get to know it, and tailor your actions to its needs. That is respect. Now what about the things in our world, the objects that we live with every day? Again, we're lucky to have nice things around us. And we have to show respect toward them. Treat things like you're fortunate to have them, like you want them to last. And always remember that many of the things we have, we share. And that's the key. We live a life in company, as George Washington would say. So take a second look at the things around you, be mindful of them, and treat them like it's an honor to have them. That is respect. In the end, the concept of respect exists in the signs we use to show it. And the best signs of respect are based on true consideration, on that second, closer look. So as George Washington wrote, don't take salt with a greasy knife and show signs of respect in every action. Thank you.
Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. McCusker, faculty and guests, fellow brothers too. I'm honored to be able to speak in front of you today. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Madigan, and this is my second year at Cardigan. Today I'm going to be talking about respect and how it's affected my life. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary describes respect as a feeling or deep admiration for someone or something enlisted by their abilities, qualities, or achievement. But for me, respect is something more and just looking up to someone for doing great things. I see respect as being kind to everyone and treating them fairly, no matter who they are or what they've done. My, my parents taught me from a young age that it is important to respect all people, animals, and things in your community. They taught me to show respect by having manners, holding doors, and helping people in need. When I got to Cardigan, I met others who were role models who taught me a lot about respect. One of those people is Jack Cavanaugh. Some of you may remember him, but for, for those of you who did not have the opportunity to meet him, he was a ninth grade student leader. Jack was always nice and respectful to everyone in the community. Whenever someone needed a hand, Jack was willing to help. I remember very clearly one day I was in the middle of a conversation with my eighth grade history teacher, Mr. Clark. Jack walked up and said, excuse me, Mr. Clark and Thomas, I was wondering if I could have a quick question about ancient history. After that quick interaction, Mr. Clark said to me, wow, Jack's the first student to interrupt my, one of my conversations respectfully this year. Some other examples of respect behavior, respectful behavior that I see around campus are people holding doors, calling people by their full name, taking hats off inside the buildings. One person I know is always doing this is Coach Kuzberg. At the beginning of the year, he talked to the senior leaders about leading the way for others. He explained that one way you could lead effectively is by showing respect. Coach K will always call you by your full name or sir, never by a nickname. Also, whenever walking into a building, Coach K will be sure to beat you to the door so we can hold it open for you. Before I came to Cardian, I attended my local public school. And you could say I was a uh, different kid and student. For example, I, of I often try to disrupt the class by making jokes and get attention. I did things like yellow obnoxious, wor obnoxious words, throw paper, or fling rubber bands. So basically, I wasn't the best student. Before, before I came to Cardian, I wasn't so fond of my history class. The teacher would stand in the front of the class and lecture us. She'd make us take notes. We thought this was a form of cruel and unusual punishment, so we tried to make the class a little more interesting. We added our own twist. Uh, for example, one student would do something to annoy the teacher, and she would predictably ask him to stop, so he would stop. But a few seconds later, someone else would take the same annoying action to provoke the teacher again. Seconds later, someone else would take up the action on throughout the class. It's not surprising that the teacher was not so fond of us, and that our bad report cards reflected on our bad behavior. When my parents read our 
her comments, they weren't the happiest campers. Uh, what had seemed funny at the time now strikes me as incredibly disre disrespectful, immature, not only did it, we waste our teachers' times, we wasted our own and other students' times in the class. Looking back on it now, I feel embarrassed that I acted that way. I also know that I have learned the mistake and will never treat anyone so disrespectfully again. What I realize now is that when I was doing that kind of stuff, I didn't have much respect for myself, so it didn't matter to me that I was acting like an idiot. Uh, when we don't feel good about ourselves, it is hard to respect for others. I'm lucky that we have a good family friend named Bob Olson, who is the former director of admissions at Lawrence Academy. He knew that Cardigan would be a good fit for me. He suggested that I apply. He described Cardigan as a kind of factory, turning boys into respectful young scholars. At first, I wasn't so convinced about leaving my f friends and family behind until I visited the point. As soon as, soon as I stepped on campus, I saw everyone being so nice to each other. Everywhere I went, I was greeted with a nice, how are you? People treated me with respect before they even knew me. And because they treated me respectfully, I began to consider the possibility that I could be a person who was worthy of others' respect. After my tour, I knew I wanted to attend Cardigan Mountain School. Since I've been on campus, I, since I've been here on campus, I've grown so much as a student, and especially as a person. I like to think that I have become a much more respectful person since my time on the point. No matter where you have come from, no matter how long you've been at Cardian, I urge you to try to respect people, property, and animals in our community. See pizza on the trash on the ground. Wait, hold on. <laughs> if you see a piece of trash on the ground, respect our property and pick it up, throw it away. If you are enjoying a snack at morning break, respect the people who provided it by thanking them and asking <laughs> them how their day is going. One easy thing I do every day is simply to thank my teachers after every class and maybe say something along the lines of, have a nice morning. In return, your teachers may show you appreciation by saying, no, thank you, have a wonderful rest of your day. What you start to realize is that respect is contagious. If you show respect to others, then you have respect to you. And then it spreads to others. When you pick up the piece of trash and throw it away, the guy behind you is less likely to drop his wrapper on the ground. In fact, he might even pick the next piece of trash, piece of trash up next to you. You have seen it happen with holding doors, haven't you? When you hold the door for someone, they're most likely to hold the door for you. Each and every one of us commits to acting with respect towards ourselves, our school, and those around us. We will, be, we will build an amazing community that is not only respectful, but respected by anyone who knows about Cardian Mountain School. Our brothers like Jack, who have gone here before us, paved the way for us. Our mentors like Coach K are here to show us the way. But this is our time, our journey, and we will decide our legacy. Let's challenge ourselves to be respectful every single day so that we will honor those who have gone before us and be known as honorable young men ourselves. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to ask that you please rise and join in the singing of the Cardigan Hymn. gifts benign we raise in song our thankfulness for beauty which is thine for winter snow for afterglow when day fades into dreams of goals toward which we all will strive to keep thy faith alive to keep thy faith in us alive together we will strive as cardigan is mirrored in our crystal lake so clear may we through life 
life reflect thy truths and memories as dear. Of summer's green false colors bright, of glimmering stars at night, God give us strength to carry on through storm or weather fair. The peace vouchsafed by living here for all the world to share. Go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord. Amen.